Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin and today I'm going to show you how I painted this scene of Sutton Park from a, using a photograph. As usual, it was quite a dull day so I've had to create my own light source and shadows. So I'll show you how I sort of approach this sort of area, all this sort of tangled, it looks a bit of a chaotic mix of, of uh, twigs and branches and trunks and fallen bracken and all this sort of stuff. And it's important to try and create a sense of depth. We've got our foreground path there sweeping through. We can just see these really distant trees. So to achieve that, really strong foreground paint mixes and really weak mixes using the same colours as the sky. It helps create that real sense of depth in your inner painting. I'm trying to simplify the, the different sections of the paintings as best as I can. Just try to create a sort of nice balance between light and dark. Before I show you how I painted this, let's have a look at the materials. I'm using my usual palette of ultramarine, cadmium yellow, Payne's Grey, Lizard and Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber, Light Red, and the only two brushes I used was the large Run Ranson Hake and the little number three rigger brush. I'm going to kick this one off with the big run Ranson eight brush and this is just clean water all the way over the paper just to lubricate it and keep the edges soft then I'm going to go a bit of raw sienna, a little bit of cadmium yellow and I'm just going to just bang that in haphazardly all the way down to the bottom of the page then I'm going to clean the brush and take on a little bit of ultramarine maybe a touch of Payne's grey in there as well. Get plenty of that on the brush. And then we're gonna just bash a little bit of sky here and there. That's what I'm gonna do for that. Now what I want to do next is take the number three rigger brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. Plenty of water. I'm just going to start with a few distant trees. Now because it's still wet, these will soften off and seem really far away. There's no water in this, so I'm not going to worry about reflections. If there were reflections, I'd be putting these in at the same time while the paint's on the brush. Keeps it simple. I'm not going to worry about remixing this exactly the same colour afterwards, which is a bit of a pain. Few more on this side. Well, not not many. I can't see many in the photograph. Let's just do a few more. I don't know how many of these will actually show up in the finished painting because as they uh, dry, a lot of them will just sort of disappear, just blend in with the general mix of everything else. So that's the first lot. Now there's a few distant trees which I'm just going to put in there. I'm going to just use the same colours as I've just, uh, just used, but leaning towards blue, which helps push things right back into the distance, especially while the paper's still wet. See how far away that looks. Yeah, a, few, a little bit bigger. And a few distant tr trees there that you can see through the ones that we'll be putting in the foreground in a minute. So that's all I'm going to worry about now. See how it looks, same sort of tone, no detail, and they'll look really far away when we put the more stronger mixes in. So what I'm going to do next is same, same colours again, and this time I'm going to put a few stronger Three trunks in there. These ones are slightly closer, but the, the paper's still pretty wet, so these are going to soften up as well. Just want to keep them really still thin because these, these are still quite far away. Well, these are sort of what I'd call like the middle, middle grain ones. A 
Do mine on this side. Don't put them all parallel. I'll do them all different angles. There we go. You don't want them all nice and symmetrical. Crisscross a few as well. Some cross. Some in front, some behind. Then the nature grows all different ways, shapes, sizes. And then what I'm going to do, switch back to the number three and just put a few little side twigs and branches and things growing amongst all this lot here. Sort of twigs and branches on mass all over the place. Some are down here as well. See so a few coming over here into the lit areas. And a few from there, which will be there'll be some foreground trees here. Now you see how the paper stretched slightly, it's coming away from this piece of plywood I've got the paper clipped to. So I'm just gonna refix this, pull it tight, refix it here on the right hand side with these clips I'm using. Now before I put the next lot of trees in, I'm just going to work out the lay of the land, work out where the path is and all this that and the other. So what I want to do, I'm just going to use a dry brush and just use a bit of, a bit of cadmium yellow. I'm just going to work out where the path's going to go. So it's, it's going to come, it's going up there and it's, it's sort of coming round there like that. Make it up there like that. It sort of comes round there. And then like that. Do a light red. This is where that bracken or whatever it's called is going to go. The, the red stuff, red browny stuff. There's some there. There's plenty, plenty of stuff there. Bit of burnt on back into the mix. Oh, it's coming down there like that. A few flicks of the. This is just a general guide. There'll be paints on top of this in a minute. So you can see we've got the sort of the path's going to come round there like that. I'm tempted just to sweep that in there, just nice and light. A bit of red, a bit of red, bit of bit of blue. And it's pretty. So quickly, just a quick sweep. And we've got a little path in. And I'm just going to push. Push that up to the path. Just bring down some sort of base colours. We'll come back. We'll come back to that in a minute. Right now, what I want next are these uh, the thicker branches. So I'm going for a dark mix. I'm not going to bother cleaning the brush. So I'm just going to go. I don't want too much water because the paper, I can see the paper is still slightly wet. So I don't want too much water. So I'm just going to go a bit of burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine. I want this to be fairly dark. Brown, blue. Now these are strong, thick mixes for our tree trunks, which will be in the foreground. A bit more brown, a bit more blue. Less water, more paint. Just keep it really thick. And then right, now work out where these big trees are going now. So we've got a big one, a big one up there. And you see straight away now, putting that really thick mix in, it's pushing everything really far back. Pop another one in there. I'm just being careful not to paint anything over anything that I do like in the distance. This is a sort of thinner one this is. 
so it just breaks away. And, oh, no. I should use a bigger brush for that. I'll come back to that one. So let's pop another big one in there. And a few. On there. Something there. Just put a few twigs and branches on there. Start with this one. Let's see. It always looks nice. See, so I'll just push it right out there into the into that lit area just to maximise the contrast. So, and then once I've been finished trying to be delicate around there, I'll just start just bashing them in willy nilly. Bit of blue, bit of brown, dark mix, and then we got a whole load of twigs and branches all over the place. That's all I'm doing. Need a bit of water for this because otherwise the brush will just dry out really fast as you put it on the paper. And we've got branches and twigs all over the place. Bit more brown, bit more blue. Some are coming from off the top of the page, you can't even see where they're originating from. Remember they're, they're just everywhere. I'm not worrying too much about each individual twi twig. So what I'm going to do after this, I'm going to put a bit of um, foliage down, just a bit of dry brushwork. That's all it needs for now. Now, this one. You see the trees slightly differently on the left hand side. So I'm going to go a bit of blue. I want a really dark green mix. Cadmium yellow. A bit of ultramarine. Um, Payne's grey, I mean. Bit more blue, yellow, Payne's grey. I'm going to sort of go just to sort of frame the view of this path as it leads around. It's sort of going sort of up there. And then this tree sort of doing branches are sort of doing something like that. Going to there. Let's just pop a pop a trunk in there. Just about to see the trunk going through. See. There's one up there, and then someone else going up there, and then some little things going around there. And then I've got the one down the bottom, the trunk. The trunk's going up there like that. And there's someone else in this foreground, there is. There's foreground trees just up here. Down there, like that. It's down about as far as there, I think. And again, where you can see all the gaps, gaps between the foliage, I'm just going to stick. You can see the trunk going up there, like that. A few twigs in there going up between these bits of leaves. A few sticking out. The one in there. That'll do for that. I think. I need a bit of dry brushwork now on the right hand side, so I'm going to make sure the paint, the uh, brush is dry. So what I'm going to do is squeeze it out, squeeze in the water out into the water jar. I'll take the rest out with the tea towel. It needs to be fairly dry. Let's just make sure it is. Just make sure it's flat first. Okay, so it has stretched anymore, so flat against the board, and then I'm just going to quickly use the air dryer. So it doesn't have to be bone dry, just as long as it's drier than it was. Scuff the airs up like that. So they're going all over the place, something like that. And then just dab 
into your colours. So I'm just going to go cadmium yellow. And you can see because it's a fairly dry brush, you're not blocking it all in. So you can see, you can see through the foliage into the, the stuff in the background. Go into a bit of a bit of ultramarine. Got a bit of Payne's grey on there as well. Cadmium yellow, Payne's grey, really dark green. That's, I think that's enough foliage for in there. Now there's a whole load of, let's go back to this sort of wonder growth section. I'm going to go back into this light red, bit of burnt umber, light red. I'm just going to pop that in again. Had a bit of blue to it, really dark in the other bit. It's going to be a bit too dry. There's, I just need to loosen it up a bit. Paint's going to be too dry. I'll just dip the very, very corner of the brush in the water, just to try and loosen it slightly. Twigs and things, don't do this. Little bigger brush. Just some twigs and whatnot growing up from all this undergrowth. Just little details even there, all that helps with the overall overall picture. Alright, let's try. A bit more green. A bit, a bit, trying to get a bit of variation on the green that's already on there. So I'm just going to go a bit of cadmium yellow, a bit of ultramarine. Ones. I'm wondering whether to whether to get a few rocks and things on on the uh, edge edge of this path. Let's just get that brush dry again. I'm gonna try ultramarine and Payne's grey and then um, burnt umber. Few little rocks here and there. Few down there. And let's see what we can get up this side. Right, so I think what I need next. Some shadows. So again, give it a quick draw. And then 
fix our shadow for that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a bit of a bit of umber, a bit of red, light red, and a little bit of ultramarine. Mix those three together until it's sort of leaning towards slightly towards blue. And then I want to get, try and get enough on my brush so I can do it, ideally, do it all in one go. I'm going to reload it. Let's see how that goes. Um, now there was, uh, as usual, there's no sun in the photograph when I was taking it. So I'm going to have to make up the, uh, the shadow. So I'm going, to, I'm going to have the shadows going across. Imagine the sun's coming across there. And I'm sort of doing this way. So the first one's... Doing like that, sort of dancing across, across the land. Just darken that slightly, just even emphasise it even more. Also, the trees here casting the shadows. focal point which I'm going to have as a little man and I'm going to bring back bring back his dog this time so I'm just going to go into those into that shadowy mix I'm going to put him right up right at the top here so we can see I'm just starting with his shoulders it's just like a sort of basic like carrot shape. I mean, some little thin, thin legs. And then right next to him, his little dog. Shadows coming from those pair. I think I'm almost done. Little bird up there. I'm just going to pop my name in this little bit there and I'm going to call this one finished. So let's see what it looks like with a bangs on. So this is the final painting in the main. So let's compare it to the photograph. So the first thing you'll notice is uh, the photograph was very dull. So I've had to introduce a, a light source. I think it always looks more interesting when you've got sort of shadows just running across the foreground areas. But starting with the sky areas, very plain sky. And I've just used sort of raw sienna and a bit of ultramarine. A bit of Payne's grain there as well, just to vary it slightly. But then I wanted to get in these distant trees. These really far away ones. You just about see them there through all the foliage. And here you can see the advantage uh, about create, trying to create depth, basically. You put these in using the same colours that you've used in the sky when the paper's still wet. No tones. And that creates the most furthest points of the painting, apart from the sky obviously, compared to when you contrast it against the foreground trees, look at the difference between the strong paint mix and the very light tone stuff, you see what I mean about creating that sense of depth? Then I just wanted to 
try and define the, the path coming through from the distance into the foreground. So I just used a bit of cadmium yellow just to define each side of the path so I knew so I had something to work with. Then I had to sort out this whole mass of trees and bushes and things growing here on the right hand side. But I've just kept it as simple as possible. It's basically it's just sort of three layers of trees. The first layer, I can't even see them now. The, the sort of really thin ones that I put in originally with the uh, with the rigger brush. But then you can see the ones I put in with the hake, what I'd say like, like the middle ones, very faint. But again that works well because they contrast nicely with the foreground ones. So I've come inside now to show, because I can't get rid of the glare if I, if I sit by the easel. Um, so with the trees in, the path, the case of then trying to create some sense of light and get some shadows in. So I've imagined the sort of light source is coming from, from over here somewhere and casting shadows diagonally in this direction. And I've then used a uh, created a sort of what was it burnt umber, light red and ultramarine mix just to cast these shadows right across this foreground area. And then for our focal point we got a little little man here walking his dog. And then don't forget to put their little shadows in as well. Well that's it for today's painting. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. Um, as always this and all the other paintings are in my eBay store. If you want to price any bids you'll see the link below in the descriptions. Um, so if you've got any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.